brothers welcome to the channel i'm out here on the range at take aim training once again today for your viewing pleasure i have a psa saber 10.5 upper aka the working man's mark 18 part two so as a continuation of my original working man's mark 18 video which you know check that out please we went a little bit further in the sense that maybe you want to spend a little bit more than just a standard you know nitride random psa upper so i went ahead and got a hold of a 10.5 saber upper that um, with the fn barrel so this is the first saber product i've gotten to take a look at from psa and um, i'm relatively impressed the uh, coating on the upper itself is one of the better factory finished coatings that i've seen in the uh, quad rail which is something else that i wanted to take a look at and get my hands on was the uh, saber quad rails it has a, uh, it, a continuation of the coating that is on the upper and actually i very much like it and i wanted to show it off to you guys before i went ahead and did the traditional rattle can spray on this thing i wanted to talk to you about the main thing that sells at least to me the saber is the effin barrel effin ports these barrels to 0 0.080 which is getting pretty up there in terms of a gas port size and it's uh, a little more than it needs to be in fact plainly it's over gas so psa includes an adjustable gas block and they're using psa's own gas block the adjustable gas block is necessary to tame this thing down a little bit as a matter of fact let's run a little drill with it so we'll run like i guess a little build drill with it or something to kind of give you an idea of how when it's appropriately tuned what kind of gassing what kind of recoil you can expect out of one of these systems so you ready up ready up i think i was one short there of a little i was one short there of a, a build drill anyway so even though it comes i mean like with the initial gas setting like a wide open it's like <laughs> significantly over gas i mean you are throwing cases like in very far in front of you i guess it's kind of nice if you want an over gas system or the ability to um over gas the system over time as it gets grimy and dirtier you can bump it up and you know that the weapon's gonna cycle or in unforgiving conditions where it's muddy sandy cold what have you uh let's do another build drill let's see if i can if i can count oh that'd be nice all right say one anyway my point being that with the adjustable gas system it's pretty smooth shooter um and that's what i like i like my guns to be slightly over gas not over gas to the point where not over gas to the point where you're just beating the system to death but soft enough that you know that you can get your follow-up shots but you don't have to worry about it just locking up and getting like a little a little sand in it or something look at that mushroom so this is my first experience i've uh, had with a saber from psa ultimately what this is um is a 10.5 saber upper with the PSA quad rail and the lower uh, from my original PSA pistol, the Mark 18, the first working man's Mark 18 video I did. So I just bought the upper, threw that on the lower. Reliability wise, it's been 100%. I haven't had any issues outside of fine tuning the gas, the gas system, how I want it. Uh, no stoppages to report. And let's, uh, real quick, let's go over the upper, you know, tip to butt, as uh, they say. 
So starting with the tip right here is a three prong uh, muzzle device from PSA that um, I'm assuming is meant to imitate something like a war comp or even the Surefire um, three prongs. Uh, it's made, it's fairly well made. It doesn't have do the annoying ting. My URGI to this day, maybe I don't have enough carbon buildup on my uh, Surefire four prong on my URGI, but to this day, that thing still tings and it annoys me. But the way that this is cut, they're um, different lengths. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, you get a little too close there. So I don't know if you can see that, but these are cut to different lengths to alleviate the pinging or tinging noise that you typically get from the these types of muzzle devices. And then also, as you can see, you have two ports right there to allow gas to vent straight up and the idea being to keep the muzzle down. So compensator. So it acts as, I guess, really as a flash hider and a compensator. And then moving back to that, we have the FN barrel. Actually, moving back from that, we have the PSA gas block right here. And so that was my first point of skepticism of this setup was a, an, an adjustable gas block uh, from PSA, no offense PSA. But uh, I generally don't like adjustable gas blocks unless you absolutely have to use them. And this is one of the instances because of the gas port size of this barrel, you basically have to have a, um, an adjustable gas block, especially for suppression. If you're gonna suppress it, then you would very much need it. But uh, ideally I'd like my barrels to be ported to an appropriate size just on their own. Uh, and so I don't have to have an adjustable gas block. That to me, I consider a weak, weak link of the system. And that's a pretty important part is the gas system. And so after shooting it a while, these two, one of these set screws just happened to walk itself out. I grabbed it and I heard it, you know, just hit the floor and I'm like, what is that? And so I start going over the rifle. And like I said, I've been concerned about the adjustable gas block the whole time. And sure enough, one of these screws had walked out and I was not thrilled about that. Um, when I went to put it back on, the material, whatever grade screws they're using for that particular part of it, of the gas block, I, when I was putting it back in, the I rounded out the head of the set screw a little bit which I, I assume that's why it was so loosely torqued to begin with is because you can't really torque them. So I was kind of a little, a little pissed off about that. So I wound up putting some Loctite on them and then getting them in there. And it hasn't been an issue since, but with that said, I will be replacing this gas block with another adjustable gas block, probably a superlative arms um, gas block, or uh, I don't know, we'll have to see. But uh, anyway, moving on back from that, the barrel itself is uh, okay. I expect to get a long, long uh, lifespan out of it. It is a, and I don't think, I'm not sure if I mentioned this or not, but the FN barrels they use are cold hammer forged. So in theory, giving you a long, longer life than just a normal chrome line barrel or a um, nitride barrel. For shorter uh, ARs like this, I definitely want a hammer forged barrel simply because these do not last as long as a result of them being so short. That's one of the, that is one of the caveats of a shorter weapon. At least when it comes to 5.56, you are going to, you're shortening the lifespan of your parts and your barrel as well. So going into the philosophy of use behind something like this, why would you want something that is short like this? It is the maneuverability that you get with a shorter barrel and a shorter system overall like this that allows you, um, it's better for vehicle work. So either having in a vehicle or moving out of a vehicle with your weapon in your home, all of the smaller confined spaces, these are much more ideal. So working in confined spaces, these are much more ideal to have than a standard 14.5 or 16. With that said, it can be done with as long a barrel lengths, but this is just more ideal, especially if you put a can on it, because once you get a 16 inch barrel with a suppressor on it, like that's, you're getting out there. Like that's, <laughs> you're, it's, that's, uh, it's getting a little long. It's like, uh, you're like getting it in like, you know, M16, 20 inch barrel territory. Once you throw a can like on a 16 inch, 
uh, rifle. And uh, that can, once again, it can be done with that. Guys did it in Fallujah. And you know, your, grand, your grandfather, your great grandfather, he's probably swung a grand around in Germany. You know what I mean? So it can be done, but it's not ideal. These are much more effective uh, in restricted confined areas. So going back to the upper itself, the Sabre upper, the quad rail is actually a pretty nice quad rail that the, uh, the Sabre line of handguards, this quad rail is a 10 inch one. It comes with a spot machined in for your sling. And it uh, has a very solid lockup on the barrel nut. Actually, uh, I went to take it off and I just removed one series of screws. Went to turn on it, twist on it pretty hard and it still wouldn't go. And I was like, wait, what? So I went and looked and there are another set of screws here. Sorry, you have your first set of screws here and an additional set in here. So I had pulled out the first series of screws on the side right here and I still couldn't remove it. You know, like I wasn't gonna break it. But uh, so it's got a really good lockup. I'm actually impressed with the quality of a Sabre handguard, at least this one is impressive and I like the finish. Like I said earlier, I didn't rattle can this. I didn't get it all nasty because <laughs> I wanted to show you guys the, uh, the uh, factory finish of these. It's actually a pretty nice finish. I'm, I'm impressed. Moving back to there, we have what I assume is a mil spec upper. Just a, you know, just a random upper and a micro best bolt carrier. It's the, uh, what is that? Like the founding fathers, you know, fathers of freedom, whatever micro best carrier that they make for PSA that uses a spring co, um, spring co springs for the ejector and the, um, the appropriate donut for the extractor too. So moving back from there, we have a Radian charging handle that as you see right here is made for PSA. And this is actually the second one of these Radians that I have um, that use the, they're not made of aluminum. Uh, it's some type of like composite material and um, the jury's still out on that. I have no idea how well these hold up, but Radian does make a good uh, product. So I do have a little bit of faith there. Up top on this one in particular, I have a Sig Sauer XDR Gen 2 on a Unity riser. I'm trying this out as a budget red dot. Um, it's kind of a story within itself, maybe a video for another time. But so yeah, that uh, overall, those are the key points of the Sabre lineup. Overall, it, it was, it's actually really nice. Um, very nice upper and if you got your hands on the complete pistol or a complete saber rifle i'm willing to bet that you would be probably happy with the product that you get that is the uh psa saber 10.5 cold hammer forged fn upper let me know what you guys think about these if you have a saber even a longer one let me know what you guys think about them but uh i like it other than the uh the gas block having to change out the gas block i do like it and I will run it into the ground. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching.